Good morning, monkeys, and welcome to the first episode of Monkey Landia here at Coaster Monkey Studios. Yeah, so if you guys have been following my social, I've got quite a lot going on um, that I've been doing so far. I wanted to flex my my skill set, kind of see what I can do. So there's a lot of things going on here uh, that you're going to see. But really quickly, before we get into that, kind of give you a big aside of kind of what this uh, series is going to be. So we're going to post it once a week, most likely every Monday. This series, uh, it's going to be basically me just futzing around with, with this program, kind of trying to understand it, trying to really dig into it. I know that there's a lot of series out there, um, that have just done absolutely phenomenal work. I mean, this, this game is four years old almost at this point. But I just got it in my hands, so we're gonna we're gonna go to town a little bit here. Um, all right, so I guess we'll get started. This is Monkey Landia. Uh, like I said, I, I did a little bit of an entryway here, and we're going to do a little bit of a zoom out. Don't mind the coaster in the background. Uh, you guys will see that in just a little bit. But yeah, this is this is our entryway. Look at this here. I am in love with this. So let's get started with the fact that my path and all of this stuff is a little bit uh, misaligned. Sorry about that. That's totally my fault. Again, learning how to play this game off, off of just watching thousands of hours of YouTube. Nah, I don't know. I guess it was a good idea. I don't know. But yeah, so... There's a little bit of a, you know, wonkiness there. But as you can see, we've got a nice little entryway. This is our uh, Grand Monkey Terminal here. Check that out. How awesome is that? So I designed this based off of Grand Central Terminal in New York City. Uh, I've got to do a little fix here, I think. Yeah. Uh, but uh, off of Grand Central Terminal in New York City, this is uh, this is a lot. This was about I want to say 20 hours worth of work. I'm thinking maybe a little bit less, but yeah. So we've got all of this great detail work here. If you can see all that, which I thought was pretty cool. I mean, again, it, it's very interesting trying to work all of this out and, and figure out how this program really works right and then as we you know swing around just over here we've got you know another clock on this side we put a clock on all three sides uh guest facing and then here's the entryway into our little train station and yes it's very barren in here i felt like train stations really aren't that super decorated i don't know what do you guys think maybe i could put up pictures of like pictures of old trains and stuff maybe over here maybe i do that i'll do like you know some framework there just to, to, to spice that up just a little bit um i am going to do a ceiling in here i think we're going to do a wood cladding ceiling so that's something that'll come in the future um and then just inside the actual train station as well just this i don't i don't know i don't think this is normally very very done up so we're going to rethink this what do you guys think in the comments down there what do you guys think about this i'm i'm uh, I don't know. We'll see. I just I don't know if I like the solid solid uh, stucco wall. And then we've got our entryway over here, which then leads out. Still getting used to this camera. It's a bit of a tricky beast, I think. See, I'm all the way back over here now. Um, yeah, and then this is where you know our it comes out. So again, very simple design. <laughs> Yeah, no. Um, and again, with the roof, I think I'm going to play up the roof a little bit. I might put a trim up around here over here. I definitely need some aircon units and some HVAC and maybe some um, scaffolding uh, for, for maintenance to walk across. I think we're going to put that up there as well. And then that's what it looks like here. So let's go into the tunnel where our guests come in. Yes, I know. I didn't have to. I could have went into scenario editor and change this but uh i liked the idea of having this you ready you ready you ready how fun is that I, mean, I love it so this is here let's go to tedget here let's see how this looks oh. Woohoo! all 
All right, so here's Teddy Cam. How cool is that? All right. I thought that'd be fun. I, I want to get rid of those two. I think like a solid column. Excuse me, guys. So this is our little tunnel. And then, oh, I should probably turn that around so you see the windows on this side as well and maybe clip that. Yeah, see, look, see all these little things you got to think about in this game. You got to think about, you know, what does it look like from the guest perspective? So we're going to walk forward here. See how nice this looks. Right. Oh, you didn't, did you guys see these? So look, yeah, I did, I did little windows. As if it was like Grand Central, look how fun this is. So for those of you that didn't know, I used to work in retail. I used to work in a couple of companies, district manager. And uh, yeah, this is something I used to do on a daily basis. So we're gonna, we're gonna close that. I don't know why I left that open. Um, all right, yes, yeah, so look at how cool that looks. Hey, whoa, that was a close up. All right, so as a guest, all right, I'll come around this way. We'll cut through the grass here. So, I love how this looks here coming in. Uh, tell me what you guys think. If you, you know, I'm definitely looking for a lot of suggestions here, guys. Definitely gonna need them. But I love this. I don't know how I feel about the orange flowers in the front. Kind of gives it a folly feeling. But you know, again, this is the color. This is my color. This is, you know, Coaster Monkey Studios. This is our logo. This is our branding. So Monkeylandia kind of fits really well here. Um, but I'm not sure about the, the nature. Nature, I'm not the best at. So we've got to work at nature. But yeah, as we come out, we're going to go around this way. Over here, we got our bathroom. We've got uh, first aid. We've got information on either side. So we're going to have one of them as first aid. One of them is guest, uh, guest services. There's a building here for our staff uh, so they can go do what they've got to do and then we've got our main entry right here so we're gonna put for this here and again we'll get into the building of all this uh in a little bit because we're gonna do uh, a time lapse for you guys uh but yeah so here we've got another information we've got uh, what a memento hats fantastic and then another information there and the reason why again is because once we're in the park I feel like the two outside can be tickets and we'll do ticket counters out there this here and here can be guest services and or uh, I don't know some type of a rental maybe a stroller rental or something like that we'll figure that out but the idea for this now is we're going to be building a uh, very New York inspired main street okay so based off that main building in the front what we've got there we've got our grand central terminal or, or, or grand monkey terminal grand monkey station you know up over here and then here we've got a building that's going to go up in the center it's about five i'd say about maybe five stories tall and again obviously scale is very important so i'm going to be very mindful of scale but we're going to put up here a building in Soho, New York, which is currently housing the Top Shop and Top Man stores. Uh, these buildings here, we're going to do smaller buildings uh, on either side. And then same thing for over here, just to flank this out, maybe a three story or a two story here. And then this will be the same building. We'll have it just wrap around. And then we're going to do about four or five buildings on either side. Here and here, and we're gonna make it very New York, very Soho esque, because uh, that's gonna be the inspiration. And then up here, we've got our roller coaster called Crazy Taxi. Um, yeah, so we built that. Um, so I'm not gonna spoil too much for you guys, but this is Crazy Taxi here. What we're gonna do is we are going to take Crazy Taxi and build that out for you now and then we'll finish the episode with a nice couple povs of this sucker and yeah that's it i hope you guys are ready for this series i know i am uh like i said every wednesday here at coaster monkey studios we're gonna have the planet coaster series going and uh yeah we're gonna go over to the time lapse now and i will catch you guys in a bit thanks so much All right, so here we are in the 
time lapse and I'm gonna walk you through uh, kind of what I was doing here. I'll pop in and pop out on occasion, you know. Uh, so we've already built that whole entryway area as you guys saw. And now what we're doing is putting in our entryway gates, our main gate area. Now I can't wait for the next episode. I think, I think it's the next episode where I actually do the building for this, which is so dope. Oh my God. Um, and we're getting really into the nitty gritty, but for this episode, it's just what you guys saw that main street itself and some really fun, uh, coaster action at the end. So with me playing this game for the first time, I ran into quite a few speed bumps. I'm not going to lie and figuring it out. Pathing is definitely challenging, <laughs> but I use a lot of tricks. You know, uh, Silverette's trick on path work, absolutely amazing, totally works. That's where I get those really cool, smooth, rounded edges there that you see. I also did some uh, semi-plaza work at the very end. I definitely change it quite a few times throughout the course of the series. See what I'm doing there? I'm using the silverette trick, which is so dope. Look at that. And it's a nice, smooth edge and clean, which is pretty cool. It's okay, so a whole idea here for this main area. We're thinking as I was planning this out, I was thinking, okay, we have our main building, uh, which winds up being like a very Macy's-esque type building. So think of Macy's Herald Square with a little bit more embellish embellishment. And that's kind of what I went for there. Uh, and you'll see that in the next episode, like I said. But yeah, so we're doing that. And we're going to have a building on either side of our main gate building. Uh, each building housing something different. One's going to wind up being a restaurant. The other one is first aid uh, and a bathroom, which is pretty cool. You know, like outside, you, you need that stuff, right? Outside the main gate. Sometimes people got to pee before they enter the park. So, but, and again, this is something you'll see I do also. I do a lot of planning when it comes to what the buildings look like. So I'll lay down flooring or roof tiles and kind of mark out where my buildings are gonna land. Uh, it helps out so much, guys. When I tell you by doing this technique, it makes it so much easier to plan out kind of what your what your park is gonna look like from a, a floor plan standpoint. So this is something, for those of you that don't know, this is what I was running into, the challenge. So you have to grid, if you start with a grid and you wanna keep that clean, line you've got to continue with the grid you can't just click in or at least this is what i've learned you can't just click in with the uh the path on its own there's a little off kilter there i wanted fixing that though but so something to keep in mind as you're as you're playing you know that grid work is it, it's so tedious sometimes but i mean it's worth it when i tell you what i pulled together see what i did here so i i, I gridded it out then I come back afterwards with the regular path that's off grid and I kind of smooth out those lines. Now, originally my main entry gate was going to be this long or my main street, my Broadway. I can't wait to show you guys Broadway. Oh my goodness. If you've not seen it yet, go to my social on Instagram or Reddit, uh, Coaster Monkey Studios. Definitely some major stuff there. Uh, super cool. But yeah, so as you see here, laying out the main street all on a grid again i i that's how you're gonna get those clean 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 lines and that's what i wanted for that and here we are taking our regular path look at that right how fun is that so i have to go see does you have to go back and forth grid not grid there's a lot of back and forth in this game and if you're if you're not patient i was going to try and fill that out to a plaza but then i was like nah, i can't do it i want it to be consistent and symmetrical but uh if you don't have patience this may not be <laughs> this may not be the game for you i've got a lot of patience and i i love theming theming is totally my jam um you know i mean my channel it is it is a theme park channel you know it is a vlog channel you know this is just an aside that i do uh for fun 
uh, outside of theme parks. Speaking of theme parks, while I'm clicking away here on the path work, so we've got some crazy exciting stuff going on here at Coaster Monkey Studios. So we're, we've got our, our first vlog up for this season, which was the Safari vlog for Great Adventure. So I don't know if you guys have seen the Great Adventure Safari vlog, but definitely check that out on my channel. But starting next week, we're doing a little bit of traveling. So next week we're going, uh, over to Hershey Park, uh, Hershey Park opening weekend. They're going to be opening up Candemonium, which I'm super excited for. Uh, Candemonium, super fun as their new hyper coaster, BM Hyper. Uh, that's going in, so that's going to be awesome. And then the week after that, so next week is Hershey Park, week after that or a week and a half after that, I fly out to Atlanta. I'll be going to Six Flags Over Georgia and Dollywood all in that week, and those vlogs will be up, so definitely keep a lookout for those. And then there are some other things in the works. Uh, we're gonna be going up to Six Flags New England by the end of July, which will be great. And hopefully by sometime within all of that, Six Flags Great Adventure will open and Dorney Park will open and we'll have you know, some really good vlog action for you guys, which I'm super stoked for. All right, so back to the video here. What you see me doing is I'm centering out what my double yellow line is gonna look like here, oh, excuse me, and uh, centered it on the gridded path and then just copied and pasted it all the way up the street. And as you saw there, I used some of the cast molding for curb. Uh, and that's a technique I saw John T from Geekism do. It was actually a really cool technique. I loved it. I totally stole it. <laughs> Thank you, John T. And again, just trying to figure out what that length is going to look like. So one thing that I'm sure you've probably seen in a thousand videos is the archer, right? So we use the archer for scale. So I put down the archer for scale here and I realize, okay, so the archer's there. And then if I look at these grid, wow, that's going to be a really long entryway. So I do two things. I put down the archer and then I use the grid to identify the thickness of my buildings and give myself a really solid length of, of road there. So this is the fun part. So at the end of our Broadway, so we've got two things planned out. Number one, we know we're going to do a Soho style Broadway. And that at the end of this, this Broadway street, this New York style Broadway, we're going to build Columbus Circle, but we're going to call it King Coaster Circle. Ooh. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's going to be pretty cool. We're going to have a fountain. We're going to have a cool statue in the center. Uh, and this is me just laying out the path work and kind of getting oh, look at that solid circle. How great was that circle? <laughs> Uh, I made it a little bit wider here, but yeah, so we do that and we do nice, uh, we're going to be doing some nice, uh, greenery or we call it nature, nature, lots of nature. But again, this episode is a lot of path work guys. Uh, and, and you know, if you're into it and kind of see, want to see what the progression of the park looks like, this is totally the episode for you. Now, I love what I wound up doing here because with the, when I put the coaster in, I create like a whole hub and spoke. Not wheel and spoke, it's hub and spoke. I thought it was wheel and spoke. Don't ask. Uh, but hub and spoke mentality here when, when laying out the park. So we put in this area here, and this is going to be where our fountain's going to go as I struggle with my path work. And this is where our fountain's going to go. And then uh, this is going to be like the end of Broadway. And then right behind it, it's going to be our coaster and then we're going to have a massive path that wraps all the way around that coaster and that's going to be our hub right so this is like think times square-esque and what we're going to do is we're going to theme out this coaster all with like a cityscape we're going to make it very very city-esque i'm using a couple of references i'm not using i'm not going to use any real buildings i think for this i don't know i'm on the fence of what this is going to look like but I think what I'm going to wind up doing is using some facades, some building facades. This is going to be cool. I'm going to take a, a page out of the Planet Coaster book and uh, Planet Coaster dev team book and, and do a little bit of Gotham City type deal or New York City and the Ghostbusters scenario. But yeah, we'll see. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like. I'm, I'm totally on the fence. 
So here I am, I'm futzing around with this path, and, and this is still me early on in the game. Remember, this is only day one or day two of me playing this game that you're seeing this video. Now I'm already one full week in, and I've already built out all of this stuff, right? But here I am futzing around with this little path, this one, I think it's a one meter, or maybe it's a two meter path. And then I, at some point I realized, oh gosh darn, I could make this path triple wide. <laughs> So I go back and I change all that. You know, the wonky path just kills me. I can't look at it. Oh God, I'm so happy I fixed that. Here, I'm trying to figure out like, and you don't realize the scale of your your buildings and your parks. If you step back and you really look at the size of the map, like I've only used like an eighth of the map at this point. <laughs> I'm thinking it's all big and stuff. No, it's not. Sorry, your beat. I'm just looking at that path drives me nuts now. Cause you know, at that point I was like, how do I do it? How do I do it? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna let the path work go for a little bit here. Uh, and then once we jump into our coaster, I'll come back and meet up with you guys. Check you guys in a bit. All right, so here we are on some coaster action. Woohoo! All right, so what I'm doing is I'm building a Mac spinning coaster with a Mauer track. Don't ask me what they are in the game, what the type of coasters they are in the game. I don't remember the names uh, game-wise, but I know the real ones. So it's a Mac coaster with a, uh, a Mauer track, and I wanted it to have a very very family style coaster feel because that's what this is i think about six flags over texas when you walk first walk through their main area off to the right off the left is spain and then off to the right you've got that that city area that leads you into gotham city where it's like their main street quote unquote with their you know uh neo victorian i think it's called neo victorian style buildings or the victorian-esque middle america type buildings and they've got their pandemonium ride which is their mauer spinning coaster and or gershauer spinning coaster excuse me so what i did here was i wanted it to feel very similar to that have that same type of vibe i wanted the track to interlay inside and outside of itself similar to as you're seeing here and at the end we'll give you a, a cool pov too but uh, I can't wait till we theme this one out. It's not gonna be for a while that we theme out this coaster because I really build out all of the main street and stuff. And I wanted to have that built out first before I got to the theming of this coaster, but that'll be probably like episode, I don't know, 10. Who knows? I've done a lot of work uh, in the past week. But yeah, so here we are uh, building out this coaster. I mean, I love the layout. I think it's so sick. You're, you're gonna get a quick POV. Super speed! Oh my goodness! I like could hear the, the high speed sound in the background. Um, but yeah, so we've got that uh, coaster built in and, and I was trying to figure out, I was gonna use the auto complete, but there was no need to. I had a really solid, whoops, <laughs> really solid ending there. I definitely go back and tweak this a lot though. I felt like it could have been a little bit more exciting. I definitely dropped down, dropped down those, uh, drops and make it steeper in some places what you see me doing now is the auto uh auto smooth technique excuse me so i built out the train with six meter track length and i went through and i tried this the, the auto smooth technique and in all honesty it just 
I mean, I, I over exaggerated each element and then went back with the auto smooth and just made it too flat. So the technique that I found that works for me is I choose the pieces of track in between each element. So as you see, there's a hill and then a valley, hill valley, right? No, I'm not talking about Back to the Future, not Hill Valley. No, but so you have the hill and valley, right? So what I do is I select the track pieces from the top of the hill to the bottom of the valley, and I smooth that. And then I move to the bottom of the valley to the top of the hill, and I smooth that, right? And that gives me smooth transitions from the peak to the valley. And then what I do is I go to the actual valley or peak itself, and I do a very little minor smooth there. And that keeps the banking, it keeps the elements aggression if you will i use the word aggression right or the intensity of that element and it creates a really smooth ride for the for the the patrons for the guests you know the experience is definitely more exciting but here you see now i'm gonna go back and tweak and, and that's really what this game is about you wind up tweaking i've built now about six or seven coasters and in that time i've tweaked i mean i i we're talking about five, six hours for some coasters just to build them out and, and really tweak them and get them perfected. And uh, this one I think only took me about, maybe it was about an hour uh, to build this out and, and get it like smooth how I wanted it and then to go back and reprofile it slightly. And you'll kind of see what that reprofile looks like shortly. And then this path works. So uh, my biggest qualm I think I have so far, and I think I need to just sort it out on my own, is, is getting the elevated path work to do what I want it to do when I want it to do it, right? And that's what I was struggling with here. There's a lot of back and forth trying to get it to do exactly what I want it to do. You know, with Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, or Roller Coaster Tycoon Classic in my uh, other series on the channel, which is not dead, by the way. It's not dead. I've just been sucked into Planet Coasters. So that will be coming back this week, guys. Um, but yes, as you see here, I'm just I'm futzing around with this this path to do exactly what I wanted it to do. It just it wouldn't do it. But I threw in some uh, cattle penning here. Yes, I know I I am not a fan of cattle pen. Uh, I don't know many people who are. But for this ride, I wanted there to be a cattle pen because that's going to be a building there. We're going to be building a skyscraper right in the center of that. You're going to walk into that building. There's going to be some air conditioning, some relief for the guests from that hot weather. Uh, and that's the whole intention there. So we make sure that you guys are, or our guests are nice and, and, and comfortable. I threw in some staff there. I just wanted to get some staff. And I've turned off all staff support at this point just so I could, you know, build freely, not have to deal with people quitting. And it's just annoying, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, I'll save that for when I actually play the game and do the custom scenario or the scenarios and stuff. But yeah, so build out my exit path. I love how it goes right under the, the entryway there. And as I step back and I look at this, I'm like, okay, I got this. I'm liking how this looks. And then I realized, look at that. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, I have to go back and change all of it. <laughs> uh, it's funny when you, you don't know what you're doing and you come back, you're like, oh, that's how it's supposed to work. So this is where a lot of that struggle comes in with the path work that I was having. So I, I needed the symmetry and I'm so OCD when it comes to symmetry and it wasn't 100% symmetrical and I go back and I went up changing all of this. Not changing it, but just modifying it so that you know, you've got the symmetry, you've got a nice flow to it. And here we're just letting our guests in so they can play. Um, and this is something I've noticed too. I don't like building when the park is empty. 
It is so boring. Um, I like it when there's guests in the park. There's a lot of energy and vibrance and movement uh, within the park. So that's what I did here. Uh, you know, and, and I build the whole way through. So you're gonna see there's guests in the park the entire way through. But here we are wrapping up uh, our video. We're gonna get this POV for you. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Coaster Market Studios. Remember, the Planet Coaster series Monkey Landia will be every Wednesday on our channel. So catch you guys next time. Thanks so much from Coaster Monkey Studios. Catch you later.